Hi friends, greetings, this is Patty Bennett. We have so much fun to cover today. I am going to give you some coloring tips when using your Stampin' Blends markers. You can see some of them that I have over here on the side. I have them out and ready to use. And we are going to be coloring flowers from the Greatest Journey stamp set. So I'm going to go over that, the supplies I used, and while you're hopping on, just say hi. I'm just going to start coloring while you all are hopping on because I figure we have a lot to do today. And I thought, why not? I'll just start coloring while you're joining me. So say hi. I see, yeah, I love the rainbow too, Tammy. <laughs> These are the patty colors <laughs> right here. <laughs> Hi, Tammy, Marcy, Robin, Lori, Patricia, Kelly, Linda. Hello, everybody. You haven't missed a thing. I just thought I would kind of get going and start some coloring while you are hopping on here so that we can get going with the cards because we have a lot to do. <laughs> So if you're joining in live, then it will be Friday, March 24th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And it's an easy date for me to remember because tomorrow is our son's birthday. I just am really finding it hard to believe that my child will be 32 tomorrow. It doesn't feel possible. It feels like... It was just moments ago that I was volunteering in the classroom and being room mom and helping in the library and all those things. I saw a post this week about the book. Somebody was doing a book fair at a school and it just brought back this flood of memories because I always was in charge of the book fair. And so just lots of memories anyway. <laughs> Um, oh, can somebody let Anne know that closed captioning will be on the replay? Thank you. Hi, Faith and Mary. Hi, Pamela, Linda, Keisha, Shan, Donna. Oh, my goodness, so many people have joined. Hello, welcome. You haven't missed anything. I've just been coloring while you are joining in so that I can um, get some things going here before we make our card. So we will go ahead and officially start. I think it's the top of the hour. This is Patty Bennett, and I wanted to say welcome to everyone who's joining. And thank you, because I know you have lots to do. I know we're busy, and I truly appreciate the fact that you jump in and join live and comment and have fun and give me feedback. It's just really fun to spend this hour with you each week. So if you're joining in live, then it today is Friday, March 24th, and all of these cards will be on my blog tomorrow, March 25th. The post is ready to go up, and then I also post the replay, so if you're looking for the replay, you'll be able to find that tomorrow on my blog. Um, let me just pop this on here. Pattystamps.com is where you will find me. Hi, Susan. Hi, Julie, Lori. Hi, Kathleen, Stephanie. Thank you, Marcy, for adding that for Anne. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you so much. Oh, Mary says her niece turns 32 tomorrow, too. Must have been a good day. <laughs> How fun. Thank you, Anne. I will tell him. Um. So, yeah, tomorrow, which will be Saturday, March 25th, pattystamps.com, you'll find these cards. So if you want to pin them to your Pinterest board or print them out or save them, you will find them there. Uh, in the YouTube video, I will link that below in the description. And today, March 24th, excuse me, all of these supplies are already listed on my blog. So if you are looking to purchase any of these products, you can hop over to pattystamps.com right after we're done and you will find all of the products listed. If you don't have a demonstrator or maybe you are one of my customers, thank you. And you can find all of the supplies right there, ready to go. So I'm just doing some coloring with Stampin' Blends. These are alcohol markers. 
I love them. I think they are so fun to use and I just love that I can get just like just enough artistic flair with them without having to feel like I need any artistic training or anything like that. I am using Poppy Parade Real Red and Flirty Flamingo on these flowers. And the greens were, what is this one? Granny Apple and, um, was this one? Yeah, Parakeet Party. And then on the two yellow ones that I already did, those are Daffodil Delight, Parakeet Party, and Granny Apple. And we are going to talk about coloring this basket. So I'm going to give you some tips on that and show you how I, how I made this card. And then please don't let me forget, I have a couple of fun surprises that I want to add when we make a duplicate of this. I have some surprises that I want to add. So please don't let me forget to share that with you. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish coloring this. And then I'm going to show you these supplies. So I forget what this is called. There are some in our neighborhood. And I know years ago, I posted pictures of this plant on my Facebook account. And I asked people, what is this called? Because I was thinking about getting one for my garden. And I never did. And now I don't even remember what it's called. But it usually, at least in our neighborhood, it is always kind of an orangish, reddish bloom, quite, uh, I want to say like fiery, quite intense in color, and fairly deep leaves, deep colored leaves. So I'm adding some darker, this is shaded spruce that I'm adding just for a little bit of extra darkness on these. And when I... So just a tip, when I'm coloring really little images like this, I just kind of hop, skip, and jump around. I'm not really trying to make this real, like, artistic outcome. I'm just sort of dabbling color on, really. it's You can't do a whole ton of shading and artisticness on a teeny tiny image like this. You can add a little, and you can make it look fun but it's not going to be like a masterpiece, but it's good enough, right? <laughs> so we have this one colored. I already colored and cut one that has some blues and more yellows in it. So, sorry, piece of uh, dimensional stuck on that. So I'm going to die cut this one. I already have this one die cut, and we're going to recreate a card similar to this using these in just a minute. But let me back up. Uh, no, this little one, it's not a hollyhock. It It is um, like a tropical plant. It's, yeah, it's very tropical. And I don't know what it's called, but I, I'm sure I could somehow figure it out. Anyway, let me show you what I'm using. So the Greatest Journey set is, has this beautiful floral in it. And of course it has all these amazing greetings it has really great grass, which I've used several times on other cards. Little trees and a, a sun or a moon. You could use that for either. And the whole suite, let me just show you, is really, really amazing. It's in the January to April mini catalog. And the dyes that come with it, aside from this one that cuts out the flowers, it's really like camping, outdoorsy, hiking, biking, that whole vibe. And so at first I thought, no, 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 this isn't for me. I, I don't, I'm the last person on earth that enjoys camping. It's sorry, I, nothing against camping for people that love it. This is not for me. So I thought, oh, I'm not going to buy this. But then this flower image just kept calling to me and it just kept calling me and calling me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to buy this. So I bought it and I love it. <laughs> but when I was coloring and making, this is the first card I made. So it's just the little Stampin' Up note card. It's three and a half, three and a half by five. Sorry, little, I don't know what that is. Something's hanging off the edge there. Anyway, um, I just stamped this same image onto 
a scallop contour die cut, let it kind of come off the page a bit and colored it. And, and it just went like super fast, super easy, just single layer, nothing fancy, nothing die cut. And I just wanted to sort of get a feel for coloring the flowers. So that was my first one. And then I thought, well, I'm going to step it up a little. So I die cut with the decal rectangle, stamped in memento ink, colored my flowers, and then can you see these three are actually die cut like this, cut apart, and then layered on top. So I just did, you know, a little extra, little extra something, something on there just to give it a little bit extra. And then when I had a couple of these colored and die cut and I was cutting them apart and I thought, oh, what about putting them in the cheerful basket? I don't know why I want to call this a barrel, like a half barrel, but it's called cheerful basket. So we'll call it a basket. But I thought that was just so pretty to rearrange all those pieces and put them in the basket. So then this became my favorite of the cards I was working on. <laughs> um, oh, somebody said, Christina, welcome. First timer, thank you for joining us. So glad you're here. I'm sorry, I'm just catching up on comments. Oh, thank you. Susan said, they are all a masterpiece. Love your colors. So let me just say one thing about colors. You can see these colors over here on the side of my Stampin' Blends markers that I've been using. I recommend using your favorite colors because somehow when you use your favorite colors, your enthusiasm, your love, your creativity, it just like pours. It just oozes out. And it's just so much fun. And Nothing against purple, but you will notice that purple it, and Orchid Oasis is kind of a, you know, an in-between. It can look purple. It can look blue. Okay. So that's kind of an exception, but I'm not really a purple person. And so for me, this rainbow of colors gives me supreme happiness. And that's, that's what I want to use. So that's what I used. So yeah, I, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> okay. It does look like a half barrel, says John. <laughs> I think it does, and I keep in my mind, I keep saying it's a barrel, but it is the Cheerful Basket stamp set, and it has dies to go with it, so it is a bundle, and it's this stamp right here. So if I say barrel or if I say basket, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so let me show you, before we die cut and cut apart the flowers, let me give you a couple tips here on the basket. We're going to call it a basket. And I actually did an entire video on this, um, I don't know, a year-ish or so ago. I don't, I don't honestly remember exactly when I did it. But, and I don't remember if I even shared this tip. I probably should have watched my own video before going live. But I wanted to show you something. Stamping on crumb cake or any sort of a light tannish color that you might have versus stamping on white. These are colored with the exact same colors. And isn't it interesting what a different look you can get? Now, leaving a little bit of white highlight right down the middle, you can see that here, to my eye really helps make this look more rounded, a little bit more realistic. I mean, I know it's just paper and ink. I understand that. But it gives my eye sort of a place to kind of like move around and then it just sort of rests right here in the highlight. I love that. I love leaving some white. My dad, you know, if you joined me a few weeks ago, you heard about him being a watercolor artist. In watercoloring, you have to leave white. True watercolor artists do not use white paint. And that's a hard lesson for me to learn. It's very hard for me to leave white. But once you learn that, it really helps give a highlight versus coloring it all in. Now on the tan, or this is crumb cake, you can't have white because there is no white. <laughs> you could use a white marker. So it's a little different of a look. And I hope that's making sense. 
Oh, good. Patricia says great tips. <laughs> good. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Kathy. Welcome. So glad you're here. So glad that you are here. Uh, let's see. Oh, you found the video. Thank you, Marcy. She just linked it. So that was from June of 2006. Yeah, so that's been a while, right? I mean, June of, I can talk, 2022. <laughs> Are words hard? Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Didn't even mean to say that. But let me give you my tips when you're coloring something like this. You've heard me talk about this before. I think it's really important to swatch the colors that you think you might use, label them, and then I keep these. I have a huge stack of these, all different colors that I've used for all different projects. But when you want to pull out some markers, because you might, you know, look at this selection and kind of think, oh my goodness, I don't even know what I want to use. What should I use? What color is going to look good? But if you look at these, that gives you a much more accurate reflection of what you're going to get than just depending on the caps. So this is what I like to do. And based on this, I pulled out, I think it was 200, 300, 400, 500. Yeah, 200, 300, 400, 500. So two, three, four, and five. Speaking of this, let me deviate for just a second. I just had an email this week from someone who said, thank you so much for posting this. Um, this was back in, I think it was April of 2022 that I posted this. Because Stampin' Up! originally marketed the, like a pre-order of these new natural tone markers in this this number code. So 1,000, excuse me, 100, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 1,000. And then I wrote, I'm glad I wrote this down because 100 and 200 was in this set. 300, 400 is in this set, etc. And this is originally how it was marketed. But now, hang on, let me see if I can pull out my catalog without dumping over piles of stuff. Now, page 128 Here's the natural tone blends that I'm using and talking about. But now they're marketed as deep, medium, deep, medium, medium light, and light. And if I hadn't had this chart originally when I started using them, I would have no idea really what those were. I mean, yeah, you can kind of see that, but I don't know what numbers they are. So I am going to add this to my post for tomorrow so that if you missed that back like a year ago and you want this as a reference, you'll be able to grab that. Or you know what, I'll just like hold it still for a minute here. If you want to take a screenshot, you're welcome to do that. But I think it's really helpful to know what numbers are in what sets, okay? So I just wanted to point that out because it was ironic that I had an email from someone just this week saying, I couldn't figure out what markers to order. I Googled it and your blog post came up first. I found your chart and it was so helpful and she was appreciative that I had blogged that. So anyway, okay, back to this. Sorry. <laughs> I really hate to get on such crazy tangents, but um, I, I just try to be helpful and give you tips and ideas to, you know, so that you are more productive and, that you will know what to purchase and not be disappointed in a purchase. Um, hi, Carrie in Vancouver. Yes, Shan, always swatch everything. And that way you never have to be lost at the beginning of a project. You always have your swatches. So let me just show you. Let's go through and color one of these and I'll show you what I did. So I believe I started with 500, and it's the same method, no matter if you're going to use white or crumb cake or any other color, same method. And of course, this is not the only method. This is how I did it. You do not have to do it this way. If you come in from each side, 
and you brush towards the middle. Do you see how I'm already starting to leave that white area? Now we're not going to have that much white in the end, but I'm already starting with that um, rather than the, I mean, I won't use this one because I, I would not color it like this, but see if you color in the whole thing, you've lost your white. You no longer have any room for that white highlight. So that's my point there. So, okay, started with uh, 500 and then I went to 400 and I just added some little extra darkening, not coming in as far, okay, just a little bit. And then went to the next one, which was 300 and just kind of here and there, a little bit of hint of even darker. And I know which one's darker because I, I looked at my chart. I want to go ahead and do these uh, interim parts. Now for those, I decided to grab Crumb Cake Light and Dark and the Ivory Marker. And these are just in the, the basic marker selections of Stampin' Up! Colors, so if you don't already have all those natural tones, then you might want to use your crumb cake. And so for this, I can lay down quite a bit of color, and I'm going to come back and look at the comments in just a bit, but I don't want to completely lose my train of thought here. And then I'm going to go over just a little, add a little there. So that's really light. Light crumb cake is really light. And then with the dark crumb cake, I'm kind of thinking here, well, this, these, um, I guess they're, see, I call this a barrel. So to me, it's a barrel ring, the ring that goes around. It is going to cast a shadow See where I'm putting that darker? It's going to cast a little bit of a shadow. So I'm adding that little bit of shadow to it. And then I think I'll use the 500 and go over again. And see what I mean about kind of like little hop, skip, and jump? It's not really, it's not really coloring, coloring, like you'd color in a coloring book. It's just sort of dabbling on color, leaving that strip of, strip of white, white, right down the middle. And then let's go, I want to go 300. Yeah, 300 for, for even darker here on the edge and right under this, whatever it is, barrel ring. I don't know. Let's go add a little bit more here. Let's darken these up too. And then when I'm kind of happy with like all these shadows and whatnot, then I come in with a lighter color. Just test it, yeah, to make sure. And just sort of blend, sort of fill in almost all of that, almost covering all that white. Not quite. you got to be careful. Leave a little white. And there we go. We're going to let that just sit a minute. It's going to soak in. It's going to blend. And then if you want to have even darker, do you see how here and here it's even darker? I'm going to let this sit a minute because if I come in now with that 200, which was my darkest color that I selected, and I do it now, it's just going to like blend and bleed with these other colors. I want to add this at the very end when this is almost dry so that it sits on top of all that color and it gives it even more depth and shadow. Thank you, Lori. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, thank you, Julie. Yes, Memento Black. Sorry. Yes, I said that in the beginning, but um, you might not have tuned in. A bushel basket. I think that could totally be, Anne. <laughs> um, hi, Colleen. Welcome. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Patricia. So 
This has dried a little bit, so now with that very darkest color, this is the, well, it's not the darkest color that Stampin' Up! has. It's the darkest color that I selected for today, the 200. I'm just coming in and adding little squiggles and a little bit right around the edge, maybe just a little more here. And as that dries and it'll lighten a little bit, it'll look fairly similar. I think I've even covered up more of the white in that one. And I think, I think, I think I'm just going to go one more time. This is ivory. This is a really good color to sort of just use as a blending color anytime you're using browns or oranges or those warm tones. There we go. And I'm going to leave it. You know, you can overwork it to death and that would not be good. <laughs> so there's the barrel coloring lesson. And I'm pretty happy with it. I really didn't know what color I wanted that little handle to be. And I really wanted it to be blue. But then I thought, no, I want to pick up the red. And so maybe when we assemble our second card, maybe I'll do it a different color. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I am going to die cut these flowers that I colored in the beginning. So that's with the greatest journey dies. So I will turn around and die cut this. There's a lot of, lot of spots here to look at to make sure that you're lining it up. So I'm just lining it up. I'm not frozen. I'm just looking all around the edge and trying, trying my best. I'm not sure if I did that 100%, but I think that's pretty good. And then my barrel die, where is that? Here it is. And the dies from this set are called full basket dies. So as you know, now Stampin' Up! is calling the dies the same as the stamp set. So moving forward, you don't have all these different names to worry about. But when this was put into the annual catalog, the stamp set is cheerful basket and the dies are full basket. So they're named different things. All right, talk amongst yourselves. Give me a minute. I'm going to die cut these. Okay, did you have any discussions while I was gone? Uh, let's see. Yes, it is, Lori. It's a great change that they made. I'm so glad they made that change. I totally agree. Let's see. The handle's in red and green. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed the tips, Cindy. Let's see, what else? Hi, Joanne. I'm glad you're joining. You're welcome to watch the replay later today or tomorrow on my blog if you would like to catch up with everything that we chatted about. Let's see. <laughs> Christina, thank you. She says, I really enjoy your enthusiasm and your voice. I appreciate that because I'll tell you, I've said this before, but I always feel like I am so boring and I do not enjoy listening to myself uh, on replay. So whenever somebody says something kind like that, I really, truly appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Patricia, I love the, the renaming. I do too. All right. Oh, thank you, Lori. You're so sweet. She says, your coloring amazes me. Just beautiful. Oh, Tammy, thank you. She says, I could watch you color all day. <laughs> Debbie loves the shading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Oh, my goodness. So sweet of you. 
Hi, Faith. Welcome. So when you die cut with the die that you saw me lining up and cutting, it comes as one piece, which is really kind of nice because if you just wanted to make a scene or something, you know, you've got that one piece to use. But for this basket, I cut them apart. So that's what we're going to do really quickly. It's not going to take too long. I think, I think I might just leave those two together. That that would be fine. If we cut them later, we will. But I think that would be all right. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit where I cut the two pieces apart. So we have that and that. And let's see. Let's just trim this a little bit. There's a little extra white in between when you cut them apart. And then one thing I noticed, I want to show you this. So the yellow one right here in the middle is the same as that. And there was too much white in there for me. And so I used my snips and I just cut that white out. Uh, it was just too white for me. So we have that little bit of area where you're going to be able to kind of see through, like see the sky or the other flowers. And then we'll just fix this where we cut those apart. Okay, so now we have that. And I'm going to cut a couple more of these because I think I want, I think I want these two. I think I want to just add some extra. This one's going to be a little bit more full. Yesterday, I was watching Tammy. She's on here. I was watching her create a beautiful floral card. And she had three flowers on the original. And then we were egging her on to add more and she ended up adding five flowers on this particular card and it turned out so beautiful. And she was like, oh my gosh, I love this. <laughs> so pretty. So we'll leave those here. We, we might add them. We'll see. So let me show you the parts that I used. This is my background and this is from the Rain or Shine package. And this is what the whole piece looks like. So the bottom half you can see is this beautiful field of daisies. I think they're daisies. And then the other half is all sky. And I, like you can't get this whole thing onto a card, obviously. You could cut through the middle of it and you could have a card front that has part grass, flowers, and sky. You could do that. This would be adorable as some sort of like a a, a mural. Is that the right word? You know, like that you would frame, you would hang it up in a kid's room, maybe put their name on it, put some other little creatures. Is that, I don't know, whatever that would be called. Anyway, that's the piece that it, this is from. And I just used the sky. Let me grab a card base because I forgot to grab that. And this is just thick, basic white. Four and a quarter by 11, scored in half, and that would be my card base. So that will be on top like that. I was going to try a color, but I love how the white just made this crisp, and it just popped, and I thought that was really pretty. So what I started with was playing, it's kind of like paper dolls, but flowers, right? I just started layering in my pieces and I was going to, maybe this one, maybe another blue. And so I was going to make the card, you know, kind of like this. And I was like, oh my gosh, that whole thing is just floating in the sky. That's, oh dear, I don't like that at all. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> so I thought, okay, it needs grass. It needs somewhere to sit. So I want to show you what I ended up using. This piece See that? It's from A Wash in Beauty. And this 
backside of that floral has this gorgeous, all these greens, a little bit of yellow, and it's just like a big watercolor wash on the whole thing. So I just started to die cut grass, and this is from the palm set. So there's palm trees and whatnot, and the die set is just called palms. Palm dies, whatever, palms. It's it's kind of a funny, anyway. So I thought this would be pretty to layer different pieces, some in front, some in back, like that, and give it sort of a place to sit. And so that's what I used. But I, I forgot to point this out. Do you see how it was a little darker on this side? I actually used my blending brush and Granny Apple Green ink, and I blended only half of each strip. So half of it is darker, half of it is lighter. And what happens is when you start to layer, do you see how then you get, you get darks and lights instead of just basically one solid color like over and over and over. And I liked that. I liked the darks and the lights. So that tip is in my blog post tomorrow. You will see that. So before this gets glued on, what I did was I started layering this grass and let it go ahead and hang over the edge. I'm just I think I'll like cut this one and use it as two pieces. So part of it there and part of it here. So I'm going to layer all that on and then I'm not gluing down the little spikes of grass so that I can nestle this in so that it looks like it's sitting in the grass, not like on top of the grass. So just going to, I think I'll try liquid glue on this one. I used my uh, stamp and seal on the this first one and that was a little bit of a mess because it ended up kind of peeking out where there was no grass and so that that didn't work as well so I think come on I think it's time for a new Tombow And I'm not gluing down the spiky parts of the grass because, like I said, I want to be able to tuck in my barrel basket, bushel basket, barrel, whatever you call it. <laughs> I don't know. What do we call it? <laughs> I should just call it a basket. That's what Stampin' Up! is calling it. It should just be a basket, right? Here for this. And then by letting this just hang over the edges, I will trim them off. And I'm actually going to use, I'm going to put this rogue piece right here, down here, because I have a little bit of blue. And I I don't. Okay. All right. So let's just let that sit for a minute. Let that glue kind of adhere. I'll see if there were any uh, questions. So uh, let's see. Yeah, you could cut it. Oh, that's a good question. So Cindy is asking, do you leave a border when you fussy cut? Well, no, you do not have to. But since this die cut leaves a border... Then when I was cutting something, I like to leave that same border. So I wouldn't want to have like half of my image be really closely trimmed and half of my image have the white border. But no, you don't have to. And in fact, I have a little surprise at the end. So you're going to want to wait till the end here. Um, I am going to stamp and fussy cut a couple of images at the end. And so I can show you that. All right, so I think we're kind of we're kind of set here with our glue. Oh, I was I was sorry, I was checking comments. A scrapbook page would be great. Yes. 
Oh, Lori loves the grass. Good. <laughs> Patricia says, your coloring talent explodes my mind in a good way. Okay, that's like awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Yes, it does look more natural now. I'm glad you like the tip with the grass. How about covering the lower clouds with the basket? Um, I think that's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Because it has a handle, I think it's a basket. A Terry, I, I agree. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Maybe so I should stop saying barrel. I think, I think that's a great point. <laughs> so Kathleen, this is a fun comment. She says, watching you cut and your creative your sorry, creativity, I think you mean, is so educational. I love how you combine different stamp sets for your new, unique looks. You are such a master. Well, that is very kind. But what I was going to say was that I love combining all different sets. It just kind of makes my heart really happy to, to look through my sets and pull out different things. And like in this case, you know, what would make good grass? And what I actually did is I just looked through the catalog and I said, oh, there's grass in the palm dies. So let me grab that. And that's what I did. Now, we're going to do a little repair because right down here, there was still blue showing. So I'm covering it up. And right there, there's blue. I'm just going to cover it up with a little bit of surgery. Okay, so we're going to tuck this in, but before we do, I am going to just put a piece of foam adhesive sheet on the back of my die cut basket. Had to think before I called it a barrel. I am leaving a little space here so that as I tuck my flowers in, it has space, they have space to tuck in. So now I'm going to just kind of weave in and out of some of this grass. Hang on, that one's behind. There we go, right, right there. So that we have some grass in front and some grass behind. And then I'll stick that down. So there we go. Now we have lights and darks in front, behind, and we have the cloudy sky and the grassy, um, grassy grass. <laughs> the grassy grass. Oh dear. Some days, some days I worry about myself. All right. So I've left a border. So this is a four by five and a quarter inch piece of the designer paper. I've left the white border because like I said, I really liked how that just kind of popped. And then hang on. There is glue. Where is that glue? Right here. This is an adhesive eraser. Stampin' Up! used to sell this. And it's just such an amazing little tool. I keep it handy. There we go. Now my card won't stick to my paper, my grid paper. So now we are going to start tucking our pieces in. And then I have a cute little surprise to show you. I can't wait to show you this because I thought about it. Uh, I think I was actually dreaming about this and I got up this morning and I got, I wrote myself a note and then I uh, got out the stamps and I was like, this is going to be so cute. Wait till you see what I'm going to do. All right, so I'll just start in the middle and I'm going to put that one right in the middle. And then I think I'll tuck this one, probably have to lift up. Lift that up a little bit to tuck. Oh, what if we, I have an idea. What if we make a slit and have, there, isn't that cute? Look how I made the, the leaf like hang over. Does that look funny that it's like, I think it needs to be more upright like that just about like that okay so I'm just gonna smash that down and then I'm just gonna take a dimensional 
and tuck it right behind here. Oh, I like that. Isn't that cute? <laughs> That's fun. That's adorable. And then we'll put, we'll put some red right in front. So when I have a larger image, like this basket, I like to use the foam adhesive sheets. When I have smaller pieces like this, that's when I like to use the dimensionals. Now this is a little smaller, so I'm going to grab my... Oh, sorry, 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 didn't mean to do that. I am going to grab my uh, mini dimensionals to put on the back of this one. And these are so little that I like to use my pokey tool rather than my fingers. So I think we'll do blue over here. Oh, that's a really nice composition. I like this. I like that a lot. What do you think? Is that good? I like that. Oh, yes, I dream about stamping all the time. I, I always um, tease my husband and son that I live, eat, breathe, dream, and sleep stamping up. <laughs> the bushel on the grid sheet looks like it's a photo that's been cropped. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Tammy. All right. So that's that part. Now for the surprise. So here was my first thought. In my garden, the squirrels that come to our garden always go to all of my pots and they bury their peanuts in all my pots. So I kind of thought that this would be really cute to color a squirrel and cut him and put him right at the edge of the pot. So that that's what I was going to do. But then I had this other thought because the squirrel is in, here it is, is in the friendly gnome set. So when I got the set out, I was like, oh my gosh, a little gnome like peeking out of the side of the pot. <laughs> so I stamped a gnome. And so if you are willing to hang with me a minute, I'm going to color those and see about adding them to this card. Now, if you're like, I've seen enough, we're good. I need to go. That's totally fine. But I thought this would be kind of fun to, to do and to add to this card. What do you think? Am I just too silly? <laughs> yeah, Lori, it's making me anxious for flower season as well. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like the composition. Thank you. Thank you. So I think I will just, this does not have to have a lot of different colors because this squirrel is so tiny. So I think we'll just go with light and dark crumb cake and then see if it needs Needs just a little something extra. Our squirrels here are very brown. They're, we don't have the red squirrels or the black squirrels. So when I make cards with squirrels, they are just pretty much brown. They're not, they're not very interesting in color. <laughs> But I like this. What is this? This is the 500. I like this this brown. This 500. I really like it. Okay. He's cute. Good on him. So we'll fussy cut him. And now I don't know who, I'm not sure who was asking about the fussy cutting. But in general, when I am fussy cutting a little image like this, I do leave white, but not quite as much as most of the Stampin' Up! dyes leave. And that's just, I don't know, just sort of personal preference. You, you, you can do whatever you'd like and whatever looks good to your eye, but I just sort of leave just a little bit. And I'm going to cut this white part out because... It's going to look funny if you don't see the flower through there, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh, look. <laughs> and I bet if somebody got this card, they wouldn't even notice it. But I think it's funny. 
And in me, for me, in my garden, that's what happens all the time, every day. Every day, they're burying their peanuts in my flower pots. And I always tell them, don't you know the Blue Jays come and take all your peanuts? I, I, well, I know they can't understand me, but anyway. Yeah, so... <laughs> All right, so let's color this cute little gnome and let's see how she looks peeking out from behind the pot. I think it would be kind of cute. <laughs> I don't know. Am I just too silly? And I'm just using the same colors that were in the barrel because then... Th this will kind of go together. It'll the whole thing will blend together a little bit better than if I picked completely different colors. And then for her outfit and her hat, I'll use the colors from the flowers. All right, what color should we make? her hat, and her little dress. Also have to consider it's going to be against the blue, so I think, I think I'll stay away from the blue, but I don't know. Should she have, what, a yellow hat? Or we could just make her really girly and give her a flirty flamingo hat. Hmm, like, should we just make her really silly? I don't know. Weigh in. Somebody help me here. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. <laughs> it is too much fun, right? It is. Oh, my goodness. The chipmunks are stealing Lori's tomatoes. Oh, my goodness. And Joanne said her squirrels are gray. Yeah, I know in different parts of the country, they're all different. All different, yeah. Uh, yellow flower, yellow hat with flirty flamingo flower, yellow hat, yellow hat. All right. That was my first thought. That was my first thought. So let's do. And I'll stay away from the flower so that I can do it flirty flamingo. Because if I try to put flirty flamingo over the yellow, it's going to be orange. And you can use the little shading lines that Stampin' Up! provides in the artwork as the area or the hint of where you want to add your shading. So can you see I just did the whole thing in light yellow and then I just, or daffodil, and then I just added the dark daffodil where they have shading. And again, this isn't some big, enormous, huge masterpiece. It's just... It's just fun, right? So I think I'm going to do light petal pink for her skin. And I don't know if you're supposed to... I think these are mittens. But this is spring. So I'm going to color them the same color as her hands. I mean, as her face. I knew what I meant. Let's do a little shading there. Okay, and then flirty flamingo flower. So I saw that, and then I'll go back and look and see if you had other suggestions. And maybe a little pop of poppy parade right in the middle to darken that. That's cute. Oh, you know what? I think a little poppy parade dress. I don't know. Let's see. Did anybody... Oh, red to balance. Yep. Okay. All colors. Yellow hat with flirty flower. Yep. Okay. Purples. Ah, Jean. Purples. You didn't listen to the beginning, did you? <laughs> uh, flamingo, yellow, red to match the flowers. Reds and pinks. Uh, yeah, I think I'll go with, I'll go for it. I'm going to do light poppy parade on the dress. Shade it with the dark poppy parade. I think I missed, I think these little things that look like tassels are actually her hair. So I'm going to come 
back with my brown to do the hair. So that's light poppy. Let's do dark poppy. Let's give it a little bit of shading. You can hear some truck outside there, you know, beep, 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 beep. That's always thrilling. I hope it's not distracting if you can hear it. And then what color for her collar? Probably just do it yellow. I was going to kind of go rogue and add another color, but I think I'm just going to do yellow and just, just let that be. I'm going to add the dark brown here because I think I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be the little tassels of her braids of her hair. That's cute. That's very cute. Is she a um, non-traditional gnome? Is that what we would call her? Possibly. And then cut her out and have her peeking out right from behind the basket. I almost did it. I almost said barrel again. When you're fussy cutting, I find it most helpful to basically leave my scissors in one spot. So my right arm and my right hand is very still. It's very stationary. And I am turning the paper. And that, to me, helps me to cut a little more consistently. And if you start way back here at the the biggest opening of the scissors and just run it all the way down to the point and then repeat that rather than like like chop 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 you don't want to do that so you just want to start at the back of your scissors and just one fluid motion all the way to the point and then start over to me that gives a much smoother cut there she is is she cute i think she's cute and then i was thinking to just kind of tuck her behind there like she's peeking out <laughs> I don't know is that too silly I think she's cute <laughs> oh my goodness I think she's cute or possibly that one could have the squirrel and this one could have I think I'll do that this one can have the gnome and that one can have the squirrel <laughs> Oh my gosh, I think it's too cute. I am so glad that I dream about Stampin' Up! and that I can think about funny things like this in my sleep. <laughs> oh, give me a heart or a thumbs up if you like it. Oh, Anne likes it, Jean likes it, Barb likes it. <laughs> oh, no problem, Regina Ann. She's going to rewatch the replay. No problem. Oh, great. Susan says that's how we taught our students to cut. Awesome. Oh, thank you, Gay. The tassels are ribbon. You know, they could be. They could be. I mean, you could totally color those a different color. Thank you, everybody. I'm so glad that you love this. I think it's just too much fun. Yep. Perfect accents. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> oh, and so I do have on my blog today, I have all of the supplies listed. So if you did not remember what stamp set or what paper or which markers, everything is on pattystamps.com already today. The cards will be on pattystamps.com tomorrow, which will be March 25th. So if you're watching a replay later, then they're probably already on there. But if you're watching live and you're looking for these, you can catch those on uh, my blog tomorrow, pattystamps.com. Thank you. I'm so glad <laughs> you guys really love these. I do too. I think it turned out really cute. <laughs> oh, good, Barb. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Can you try the gnome on the left and the of the basket. Okay, the gnome on the left. Yep, I mean, she totally could be. She can be anywhere. 
She totally could be. I, I really kind of like, I don't know, I just like her on this card. So I think I'm going to do that. Stick the squirrel over there and the gnome over here. But yeah, they can go anywhere, right? Oh, thanks, Lori. Thank you, Carol, Aileen, everybody. Thank you. Hey, and Aileen, thank you for the St. Patrick's Day card. That was so kind of you. It was so cute. Oh, I'm so glad you like these, everyone. I appreciate it. Aw. Yeah, I know. Isn't it so exciting when you make something fun? Tammy was very excited with her uh, wonderful floral card yesterday. You can find that video, by the way, on YouTube. Search cards by TLC, and you'll see that beautiful card that Tammy made. It's just, it was just stunning. Thank you, everyone. You are all so kind. Oh, yes. If you missed the beginning, it's in Greatest Journey. And it has the die that goes with it, as you saw me die cut and cut those out. So it's in the Greatest Journey in the uh, J January to April mini catalog. Any other questions? Let's see. She could be cut and tucked behind the basket even more. Yeah, that's what I was thinking was having her like really tucked behind. So I might... Let's see, I don't know how much, yeah, I might have to, if I just cut off that right there, I can tuck her even further. I don't know, I think that's pretty good. Just pushing it over as far as it will go, and then I'll tuck her behind the grass too. Yeah, <laughs> totally cute. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad that you like that set. Thank you, Christine. What if she was in the pot? Oh, my goodness. Like, I think these are two. Um, they're all glued down in there, so I can't really tuck it. But but it could. Let me see if I can. I mean, yeah, she could totally be in the pot. She totally could. <laughs> Creativity, right? We can do whatever we'd like. He could even be down there. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I hope that you all have just a super fabulous weekend. We are going to be in San Francisco tomorrow. Our son wants to go to Bubba Gump's. We used to do that every year for his birthday. And then, you know, with that thing that shut down the world for like two or three years, we didn't go. So now we are going back to Bubba Gump's for his birthday. So he is looking, well, we are all looking forward to that. Thank you, Ann. Thanks, everybody. So again, pattystamps.com tomorrow, March 25th. You'll find these cards and then you can pin them or save them however you like to save them. And then um, you can recreate those if you would like. So I will see you all next week. And next week, hopefully, I will be able to spill the beans about some of the new colors and the retiring products because on the 29th, we find all of that out. So that is next Wednesday. Be sure to check my blog on Wednesday around mm, noon-ish, California time, Pacific time. It'll take me you know, a few minutes to get the list up and all of that, but it'll be on there so that you can see what's retiring, what's going on sale. And then on Friday, hopefully I will have some information about new colors for you. All right. Thank you again, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Have a fabulous weekend. Bye.